Greetings. I wanted to uh, put together a little video with regards to uh, accessories on a BMW GS800 Adventure. Um, a lot of you guys out there have accessories for your bikes and not sure quite how to integrate them into the battery supply and how to uh, make sure that you don't drain your battery. So I've decided to put this little uh, project together and uh, show everybody what I ended up doing on my bike, so hopefully this helps for you. Got my trusty partner over here, Lizzie. Hello, Lizzie. Uh, now, just going through some of the accessories that uh, most people usually put on uh, motorcycles, and some of the extra little things that I ended up doing on mine, uh, which I was quite happy to do. Um, just to kind of go over, we'll go start from the back here. So, <clears throat> I ended up uh, getting uh, one of these uh, Pelican boxes. It's actually a uh, 1500 with the Caribou luggage rack and the system for it. Now, Caribou basically sells these uh, kits, these DIY kits, uh, for uh, those are around a little over $200 uh, with the uh, back plate and then all of the hardware that goes with it. Um, they generally say to go with a 1520 or a 1550 box. This is a 1500. And all I really had to do is kind of shave off some of the ribs, uh, the stabilizing ribs on, on the bottom of the box to accommodate to the hardware. So it worked out pretty well, but the, uh, the whole uh, reason why I'm kind of integrating this into the accessories is that I've actually put power supply from the bike into the box. Now the whole premise behind this is to ha make sure that I have supply for a drone that I'd like to get in the future. So then I can just have it just trickle charging in the box and then able to deploy with full charge whenever I really want to without having to charge batteries. So that's a nice little added feature. Um, one of the things I just did here is I just created a, a little disconnect here, a little uh, two pin disconnect or SAE disconnect. So if I want to just take the box, I could just disconnect it from there and I'm good to go. Moving forward uh, along the bike. so. In the front, on the handlebars, I've got my InReach Explorer, which got the uh, the charging cradle for it, and it has a wire that goes all the way through, and I've got it hooked inside uh, underneath the uh, the tank, uh, the faux tank here. I also have my son's uh, iPhone. My uh, my iPhone had a little adventure uh, this weekend, um, a little worse for wear, a little, a little smashed up. So that's a whole different story, but uh, yeah, real fun. Anyhow, I'm just gonna have my son's iPhone here just to show that uh, this battery supply actually works. Uh, one of the other things too that a lot of uh, bikers have are GoPros. <clears throat> now we all know with GoPros how their battery power is absolutely awesome. Um, not, well, I ended up getting, as you can see, direct power supply. I just basically have the waterproof housing cut open the side of the waterproof housing, put a silicone earplug on the side to make sure that it is waterproof. And then now I've got constant, I can have constant power and then also Wi-Fi to the phone. So then I can actually see the angle that the camera is uh, at and making sure that it's recording and adjust any uh, functions I can right from the phone without having to muck around with the, the uh, GoPro. Really happy I ended up doing that. Uh, we'll see how the film comes out. Haven't tested it yet, but I think that the, the premise behind that's gonna work out really well. Um, the other thing too, with these adventure bikes, uh, a lot of people are kind of going with these winches. Now, here's the winch connector. And it's just basically just tucked really nicely in, inside here. So. If I really need to get at it, I can just plug it and go ahead and go from there. Um, I also have a tank bag. It's not on the bike right now. Let's make sure I'm in focus here. There we go. Sorry. Um, now I have a tank bag as well too. Now the tank bag itself um, is basically, I put a, li a little... Um, two piece, uh, sorry, two pin connector here as well, as you can see. And I'm gonna get a little cover for that so it doesn't get corroded. But basically, when I have my tank bag here, it also has another connector that will connect directly to that, and then it will charge 
whatever I have in the, the tank bag. And there's also an exit port in the front of the tank bag, um, which I'll show in a little while, which will connect to any heated gear that I plan to get in the future. Up in Canada, it's nice to have that little extra warmth to the to the upper core, so I think I'm going to go with that. So, anyhow, uh, I'm going to basically pull off the tank and pull off the seat to show you what I ended up doing as far as integrating power to all this. All right, back at her. So now the tank is off and the seat is off, and I just want to show you kind of what I ended up doing for wiring on this. So a lot of guys online really recommended this little module. So this is the fuse block. Um, it's basically a little, basically a fuse system that allows you to integrate a lot of your extra accessories directly to a fuse block, which is easily accessible just by popping off the, the faux tank. And you can label whatever accessories you want on here. The really cool thing about this little feature here, and I'll just take out these screws, and just have them hand tight here. Let's take the screws out. Hopefully don't lose one inside the bike. There we go. So if I take the block off, you'll see, if I can get in focus here, you'll see that we have power supply from this side. So there's positive, negative on the other side, and the middle one is a switch wire, which I'll actually describe here in a little while, what we ended up having to do with that. Then you'll also see here, there's three channels. If you put your fuses on this side of the channel, so these, these two channels here, if you put the fuse in there, then it's on what's, what's called switch power. So whenever the bike is turned on, power is brought in from this relay, and it activates the connection to your accessories. So you're not draining your battery power. If it's on this, these two channels here, then it's under constant power. So it bypasses the relay, allows you to have constant power to whatever accessory you have at that point. Which, I don't know really if there's any application as far as what I would use it for. I think I would put everything on the switch side, um, but who knows, that could change in the future. But for the time being, everything's gonna be on the switch side for me. And I'll just show you what I ended up plugging into the system. So, looking at the battery, by doing this, it kind of cleaned up my battery. I know it still looks a little on the tight side. Um, the, the whole thing here with this battery, and I'll try to get back in focus here, there we go. Um, the whole thing with the battery is that a lot of these, some of these uh, accessories you buy um, require that you have uh, a 15 amp fuse in the system. With the fuse block, it has a 30 amp inline to the, um, to the actual uh, positive lead coming in. Now. The, the problem with that is that it only allows you, and they, what they recommend is only to have uh, 10 amps max on each circuit. So if I were to do three tens, then that would max me out. So this is really good for like those really low amperage sort of accessories, like iPhones and whatever sort of thing, right? Um, accessories that require more direct power, um, like air compressors, um, or your your um, winch or whatever sort of thing, they recommend to basically connect directly to your terminal ports on your battery. So here I end up ha I end up having three. I've got and they're pretty accessible. I've got one uh, inline fuse there, and I've got two more that are labeled right here. Um, one of the ports is for the the two pin here because I like to use that for um, basically for my tank bag mostly, um, but if I wanted to, I could use it for the air compressor because it is directly in line with the battery. I've got my winch, as I described before, directly connected to the battery. And I also have another um, two pin connection over, nicely tucked away right in here. I'll grab it so you guys can all see right there. And that one is really nice and accessible beside the bike for the air compressor. Um, and I can also trickle charge my battery from that port as well too. Okay, getting back to what we actually have connected to the actual flu fuse block. So I've got direct power going from the fuse block, from the, from the, uh, the battery. There's a 30 amp um, 
uh, fuse that goes along on the battery on the um, positive side. Negative side connects as normal. And then there's the switch wire. So uh, the switch wire is basically designed so that when I turn the ignition on, it activates the fuse block, as I mentioned before, and all those accessories are activated. Now, finding the switch wire, there's been a lot of controversy and debate as to where to put them on these uh, BMW GSs. Now, for me, a lot of people, they said that uh, don't, I was watching, so look going over some of the, um, the forums, they're saying don't connect to the CAN bus, because if you overload the CAN bus, uh, which is, I believe, I believe it's uh, one of these, I think it might, have been this, might be this. If you connect to the switch wire and the CAN bus, it could overload your computer system and cause a lot of faults and that just sounds just overly expensive in my, my opinion. Um, so I'm completely avoiding that area and it just, again, it's one less wire in that area. Um, the, the other recommendation is to uh, connect it to your headlight so that when you turn the ignition on, the headlight is uh, turned on. Um, for me, it just seems really tight in this area, really, to kind of muck around. So I figured I'd go somewhere else. And a lot of other people have decided to go to their, uh, the accessory light, or the light for your license plate. Now, a little cumbersome to get to, but, you know, it actually worked out pretty well for me. So basically, for the switch wire, which is kind of like this middle wire right in here, and it is colored black right there. Basically, I kind of trailed it down this area here. And you'll be able to see right beside the red and white wire here that there is the black wire. Go there, it goes there. Kind of got underneath the bike here. Now it's not this black wire because this black wire goes to that, that two point for my Pelican box. But it's actually tucked in as you can see right there along the back. Now <clears throat> with the adventures, if you plan to make it like really super clean, um, you might want to take this box off, but the problem with that is you have to take this whole um, rack system off, which to me was just one little extra step that just seemed really overly cumbersome. So I kind of just decided to bypass that. Now, we'll go over on this side of the bike so you guys can see. Now on this side of the bike, <clears throat> you can see where that wire went up, ended up there, kind of along the side and the back. Now, I ended up trailing it right underneath the bike. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of in, in right in this area here, up here. I put a little wire here and just drilled a little hole. Now there's a cap here, which I'll show in the pictures. It doesn't really show really great in the, in, on video here because I don't have, really have the greatest light. And, um, so, Basically, it connects to, there's two wires that go to your tail light here. Now, one's a brown, which is um, basically ground on BMWs, and the other one is a blue and gray wire. Now, that is your power supply to your tail light, or not to the tail light, but to the license plate light. So, if so this is a photo uh, underneath the fender of uh, the GS. Uh, there's a little panel where it's a single screw and uh, you can access the panel. It's like a little uh, alcove in here. And you'll see that there is a wire that's uh, been covered over. Now, if you trace this wire, it will go right out to the uh, light bulb for the license plate. And this is where, if you expose this, you will see a brown wire and a blue wire. And the brown wire is the ground and the blue and gray wire is the power supply to the, the little light. As I described, uh, when you trace the wire, you expose the, the little covering over the, uh, the wire, you'll see that there is that blue and gray power supply. That is what you need to tap into with a PosiTap connector, which I'll show you right now. So these PosiTap connectors are really versatile. Uh, it pierces into that power supply, as I mentioned to you, and you would just attach the switch wire 
into the end of the POSI tap. And it will provide you now power to the switch wire. Here is a photo of the POSI tap, uh, which has pierced the blue and gray line in the uh, license plate light. Now I'm going to trace that wire all the way back to the fuse block and put into the actual slot for the switch wire. That way when the bike is turned on, the power supply uh, comes through this um, uh, little license plate light bulb and then it will activate power. It's a 3 amp uh, inline um, a fuse that's in the switch wire uh, that will go towards the fuse block and uh, will activate the relay so that you can use your accessories. So if you can tap into that, as soon as you turn the bike on, then it will activate that relay, which is over here. It'll activate the relay on the fuse block, right there. And when it does that, then those accessories are active. So that's kind of what I ended up doing. I just kind of kept things really nice and clean and simple. And so now I've got power supply to this. I've got power supply to my tank bag through a direct circuit on, on my, uh, my two pin here. And the nice thing is that I can just take my tank bag with me and then now it cuts out the power so it's not going to drain my battery. And then as soon as the bike is turned off, then both my Explorer and the phone are actually turned off as well too, which I'll be taking with me if I leave the bike anyway. So I'm going to put everything back together. I'm going to turn it on. I've already tested everything, so it is working. But I'll turn it on and you'll see kind of how everything works. Oh, one last thing before I put the faux tank on. So I've got the cap back on for the fuse block. It's nice and protected here. Um, in order for this to fit on the BMWs, you have, to take, you have to make sure you don't put that bottom plate. Now, I just basically put some double-sided Velcro underneath the fuse block. And it's nice because I can remove it. Um, and yeah, so it, it seems to sit really nicely underneath the faux tank. Now it's tight. That's pretty much, you don't have any any room for error there on this one. So you gotta make sure that you go right down to um, putting the Velcro right underneath the fuse block. Now, the one accessory, the other accessory as I mentioned, the two accessories I have it plugged here. One is the one that goes to the Pelican box in the back. And the other one goes to, as you can see, a little car charger in here. It's just kind of tucked in beside the battery and the fuse block. And it's uh, basically a like where I can plug in three USB uh, cables. Now, you could splice these and put them right into the fuse block, but the problem is, is that if I ever want to bring this over um, like into my car, like especially the, the, uh, the Garmin, um, you know, cradle, if I want to bring that in, then now I don't have a USB plug to charge it from. So I really decided I, I didn't want to splice those. Um, so I just put a little, a little, you know, little cigarette uh, car charger in there, and then just had it trail in and connect to here. So I only have about 7.5 amps that really are drawing from this area, or less, and uh, just put a 7.5 amp fuse in the uh, fuse block. So that will supply the GoPro, uh, the uh, Garmin uh, Explorer inReach, and the iPhone. All right, back at her. Now, we've got the seat back on, which is great. And we have my tank bag back on with the faux tank back on. Now, it's pretty tight putting that uh, faux tank right over the fuse block, but um, I'm pretty happy about it, actually. It, I, I didn't think at first that there would be any room for that block. But seeing some pictures on some of the forums, which uh, by the way, thank you guys for putting them out there because I really didn't know where to put that block. There really isn't much room on these bikes. So it actually fits pretty nice. So I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, okay, so the ultimate test. Let's throw on the power to the bike and go through what we see. So you can see just by, you heard that little, little switch. Well, you can see obviously the power came onto the phone by itself, automatically powered up the Garmin. If we go over to the GoPro, you can see it's got the red light. Awesome. Very, very happy about that. And if we look inside the tank bag, <clears throat> we'll see that my iPad actually 
Try to focus in. Yeah, it is charging. You just can't really see on this video, but yeah, it's charging. So I'm pretty happy about that. And just basically in through a cigarette plug in here. So you can see this is pretty sweet. So I have some extra items if I want to, I can charge in there. <clears throat> and then you can see right here in this tank bag, it's got a little hole that I can just puncture through and then put the uh, female adapter for the heated gear, which I plan to get next. So very happy about this project. I hope that, um, sorry about the in and out of focus on this video, but uh, I hope you guys get the premise behind what uh, these little fuse blocks are all about and what they can really do as far as making your life very convenient and charging your your, uh, your gadgets. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.